Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and just like we all thought, right after the holidays, we've got some more Aether Revolt spoilers. Now, I thought we'd have to wait a while longer to see the remaining two Masterpiece cards, but nope, here they are. Now, even though these are special Masterpiece cards, keep in mind that there will also be a normal version printed in the set. Although we don't know what rarity, I would assume Mythic or Rare, but then again, Ornithopter is a common from M15, and they made that a Masterpiece. I don't disagree with it. I think it looks lovely and I like the card. I'm a little bit concerned about the mental health of some of the employees at Wizards of the Coast, but I still like the choice. So first up, we've got Paradox Engine. This is a pretty neat card. Um, it costs five, which is a lot, but this would obviously go in a ramp deck, uh, especially one that uses the new mechanic, uh, Improvise. Now, Improvise is basically super convoke for artifact creatures and artifact cards. It lets all of them tap for mana. So this would be appropriate, yeah they made it legendary because seriously if this stacked that would be a catastrophe, but um, whenever you cast a spell of any type, so creature, whatever, they could even counter the spell, it still counts as attempting to be cast, untap all non-land permanents you control. So you can just throw out some little dummy one cost, two cost spell, whatever, and then untap all of your artifacts and there you go. So this is obviously built for Improvise. You could cast an improvised spell for zero or very close to zero, and then, in response to it being cast and you tapping all of your artifacts, untap all your artifacts and cast another improvised spell. Even if you're not using improvise, I mean, you could just have, you know, this could be the only artifact in your deck. You've got nothing but mana dorks, scions, cryptolithrite, whatever, and you just need to tap them for some reason. Otherwise, it kind of works like a panharmonicon, except for activated abilities. Well, at least activated abilities that require tapping, but if it didn't require tapping, you could use it twice anyway. So it's a pretty useful card. Um, the only problem is you really would have to have some mana ramp to reasonably get to a 5 cost. And even if this was in an all artifact, just tap for mana deck, um, I don't think people would run 4 of it. So I think it's a perfectly appropriate card. It's well designed. Um, I'd like it. Plus, I just like the saying, you don't ramp to it, you ramp through it. That just sounds smart. Now, next up, we've got a catastrophe of a card. Um, I don't remember them printing anything this devastating since, I don't know, I'd have to say Treasure Cruise or Dig Through Time, but honestly, I'd lean towards Treasure Cruise. This is some universally broken crap. So you throw it out for six, which I'm just going to th throw a little guess out here. I don't think Mana Ramp is going to be a problem as soon as Aether Revolt comes out. Honestly, it's not really a problem now. I mean, BFZ and OGW, it's not a problem. So you throw it out for six, and let's just pretend that that's reasonable. Now, the problem is you have to pay eight to activate the ability, and otherwise it does quite literally nothing. So there's some more evidence. Under normal circumstances, you get it out for six, and that's because you tap six lands. To get to eight, it would take six more turns, because one in three cards in your deck are land, so it's going to take approximately three more turns to pull one more land, and then three more turns to pull another. So this would be sitting there ready to get blown up for six turns, at which point you probably would have lost the game. No, this is obviously going to go in a ramp deck. Although I will say, if you were to free cast this with like Aetherwork Marvel or whatever, uh, it doesn't matter, you still have to pay 8 for the ability. So once you get 8 together, you can tap it and search your library for a permanent card and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That's right, not just a creature, a permanent card. So that would actually include a land. The only thing I can think of that it wouldn't include is, oh boy, just a spell. I think that's it. I mean, a Planeswalker would be a permanent card. It would actually have to be a spell. This can go get anything else, an aura, an enchantment, another artifact, whatever. So one possibility with this card in standard is that there's going to be massive, massive, massive ramp. Like there's going to be so many mana dorks or there's going to be some sort of like artifact version of devotion, like Nikthos Shrine to Nyx, where it's one single land, but under good circumstances with a big board state, you can tap it for a huge amount of mana all at once. I think we'll probably see something like that. But if we don't, we already have the cards, okay? So Scions, you could just Scion dump, throw out some mana dorks, and get to Planar Bridge. If you're playing blue, you've got Contingency Plan, which is basically Scry 5, you're going to find a Planar Bridge. So that's a bit of a problem, but if you remember some of my older decks, actually two of my most powerful decks I've ever built, they both used Cryptolith Rite, one of the most powerful spells in all of Standard. Very underappreciated, 
And unfortunately, there's a couple reasons that it never became big. I think I just went into it in the last video, so I won't go into it again. But uh, I think it's back. What you do is you cast Cryptolith right, and then you tap your Scions for one mana, then sacrifice them for another mana, and six Scions plus, we'll just say three land, you've got nine mana. So if you played your cards right, haha, <laughs> I love puns. You could get a planar bridge out on like turn three, four, five. I mean, it depends how long it takes to go get it. Uh, I mean, w under the perfect circumstances, I think you could actually get it on the field on turn three. It would be a little bit of a stretch. You'd have to have the perfect flawless cards. But other than that, I think uh, it's doable. Unfortunately, if you burn up your scions to get out of card like planar bridge, you would not be able to get to eight quite as quickly because you just tap them for mana, then sacrifice them to double dip. But if you had enough of them going, and if you had some kind of way to generate mana with um, your servos that you're also dumping out, which, yeah, Cryptolith, right? Now you can tap for so much mana, it doesn't matter, and the whole time you're you know standing on 10 tokens in a line that can block anything. That's a lot of stall out. I mean, it would still lose to turn 4 Emrakul, because what the hell wouldn't? But uh, other than that, you've got a pretty powerful deck. So I think Cryptolith right is going to go insane and apparently i'm not the only one who thinks that because the price has been going up just a hair lately and the uh, yeah, availability on ebay especially has gone down the toilet i think if you were to go buy every single cryptolith right listed on ebay right now you'd have less than 30 does that seem like a little bit of a problem for a bulk rare for you guys which by the way it's creeping up to like six bucks per set of four now i think people are starting to suspect what i did and when i as soon as i saw servos i'm like okay something's going on Servos and Scions together, that's too many good cards that can dump out stuff early. So I think finally green-blue is going to be a thing because blue is the only way to scry and control it and stall. And then you're going to need, you know, some bounce back to hand, just, you know, blue kind of stuff. And then you can get your cards consistently. They even have passive scry every single upkeep. I mean, it's just insane. Oh, and some of the six and up cost blue spells are horrific. They are game-ending terrible. So let's go outside of standard for a minute, because looking at Planar Bridge, I think some people just stopped playing standard. Have you ever heard of a deck called Tron? And there is really no deck called Tron, it's more like an idea called Tron, because there's like Blue Tron, Green Tron, Colorless Tron, Eldrazi Tron, I've seen it all. Tron is just a mana base, it's just a system of fetching lands, it's like a framework and then you put whatever you want on top of it. Well now, throw everything out the window, put a bunch of one-ofs, and put in Planar Bridge. That is some broken, broken, broken crap. I guarantee you Planar Bridge is going to be banned in Modern. Absolutely guarantee it. So let's say you're playing Tron and you get out Planar Bridge. Okay, so instead of relying on naturally pulling or scrying and anticipating and all those ponder clones and like serum visions or whatever, you know, using all that to get to your giant creature like Worm Coil Engine or some giant Eldrazi or whatever... No, all you have to do is just get Planar Bridge out. So you could pull your, you know, two of, three of, four of that you have carefully calculated and just put one, 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 five giant creatures, one Emrakul, one new Emrakul, one Ulamog, you know, maybe a Kozilek. I mean, just devastating creatures. I think there's a 15 cost Eldrazi. I think there's like a 14 cost giant worm or something. There's some demons and angels that are insane. Like you could go get a Chroma. Whatever's appropriate for what your opponent's playing, go get that and you only have to have one of it because now you can go fetch it. This is exactly how my go fetch deck worked in standard. I had one of four giant Eldrazi. And whatever I thought I needed, if I needed a Void Winnower, that's what I went to go get with, uh, what is that, From Beyond or whatever. So I actually had eight ways to fetch Eldrazi and four giant Eldrazi sitting there. It was perfect, the deck worked perfectly, and they almost never ended up in my hand, naturally. So with Planar Bridge, I mean, the fact that you can go get anything, and it could be not even just a creature, it could also be any other type of permanent, that is game-ending. If they don't ban this, Tron is going to take over, and Tron is not that expensive of a deck. The good thing is, if they ban this, it's not like they're going to piss off Tron players, because they could just build any other type of Tron. I mean, if they ban, like, the Tron lands, oh my god, that would be a completely different story. Now, Tron is kind of unreliable and annoying and a bit of a mulligan bomb, but, um... It's famous for a reason. It works, in general, so with Planar Bridge, I think it just went a little bit over the top. 
So if it's not a disaster in standard, it'll definitely be a disaster in modern, and that's not good, because if you don't like the state of modern, what do you go play? Well now, Commander. This is basic Eldrazi 2.0 with Planar Bridge. So yeah, they made a giant mistake printing this card. It's too easy to ramp into. I mean, once we lose BFZ and OGW, okay, this is going to be an unplayable card. Nobody's going to be able to ramp to it. It'll be garbage. Sort of dependent on Amon Cat, but not really. But I mean, even before Kaladesh came out, even before Shadows came out, you could get 10 mana on turn 5. It was doable, people did it, okay? So, throwing in Planar Bridge and pretending like, oh, but it costs 8, so it's okay, because if you had 8, you could have just cast your giant 8-cost creature. No, it's a go-fetch and it's a one-of-fetcher, okay? Everybody knows that, that's how it's gonna work, it's too powerful. So I wouldn't be that surprised if it kind of flops in standard based on the type of deck and how resilient it is and based on the other powerful decks that are out right now. It could become a second-rate deck and not be that disruptive, but in modern, this is insane. Completely insane. So that's my overall review of it. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, I, I quite like Paradox Engine. I think it's appropriate. I think it's a good mechanic. It should be fun and should work. If you don't draw it in a game, great. But if you do draw it in a game, also great. So those are the best design cards. Planar Bridge, complete catastrophe. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know down in the comments section. God help us all. I'll see you guys next video.